welcome to today's video tutorial. Uh, before we get started, uh, please put your name down in the comments uh, and let us know where you're from. And uh, we're going to be giving away one of the products that I'll be using here today, so make sure to do that. Uh, my name is Sonia Chandler, and I have um, a business here in Nashville, Tennessee called Socks on a Rooster, where I refinish uh, furniture and decor. So today's video is going to be over um, our really beautiful furniture transfers. And I'm going to show you how you can use them not just on furniture. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use them on a decor piece and in a different way. Also, I'm going to show you how you can use candlesticks for not just candles. So uh, we're going to be using a little bit of one step in Selznick Gray. And then I'm going to show you how you can use pieces of this transfer to uh, make a really pretty delicate uh, design feature on these candlesticks. So uh, let me get started here and I'll show you how. Okay guys, so uh, here I am with my candlesticks and I always start out with clean slate. Um, you wanna go over your entire piece, both of these candlesticks, this set, uh, they're made of wood. And especially when they're dark like this, you don't really know what's on them. So if you use your clean slate every time, uh, you won't have any surprises when you get your paint on. Uh, you, you'll, you can get paint on and then start to see um, dirt and things come through. But then once you've, getting your, you've got your clean slate on and cleaned, you can start your painting. And I'm just going to do a simple base coat of one step here in Selznick Gray. It's, it's one of my top favorite colors uh, of one step paint. It always looks pretty. Uh, I think what I was going for here with these candlesticks is kind of a like a French rustic sort of aesthetic. And the Selznick Gray always gives me that really kind of Parisian sort of um, really pretty uh, gray. And I really love that. And with this um, elegant script transfer, it's going to be, um, really pretty. So when you're painting anything like a candlestick or a spindle on a chair, um, even stair spindles, you want to go around the spindle. You want to go circular. Uh, you don't want to go up and down. So around this way, uh, if you go up and down, you're going to get drips and runs, and it actually takes longer to paint it that way. When you go, uh, around the spindle or around the candlestick, you're going to get the best coverage and you're not gonna have any runs or drips or anything uh, flowing. So you just want to, um, you just wanna make sure you're going not up and down and around. Uh, it's very helpful, especially when you're doing legs of chairs or tables, um, chair spindles, uh, stair, rails, all of those are much better if you just go around the spindle. Now, uh, I just did two coats of my one step here on both candlesticks, and I just left it at that. You can do um, a whitewash over the gray if you'd like a little bit more dimension. Um, you can add another element or layer to this one step once you get it on uh, if you'd like. On this one, I decided to keep it very flat and kind of rustic. I didn't want it to have any glam, which is normally not my thing. I usually like a little touch of gold leaf, but I wanted these to look, you know, really rustic. So I just went with the flat uh, Selznick Gray. And then uh, I will show you uh, what we're gonna do here with the transfer next. And with this transfer, um, I'm just gonna be doing a, a really uh, small bit of it, and I'll show you how you can use small amounts of the transfer. Okay, so when your transfer arrives, um, this is the script transfer. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's gonna come in a tube like this, and it's gonna be uh, all rolled up, you know, the whole transfer comes in one piece and it's rolled up and it's in this tube. And you're just going to take the end off and unroll it. <clears throat> There's two parts to it here. Um, you're going to have the top sheet, which is 
the carrier sheet. It's a it's a clear sheet, and you got the carrier paper on the back, uh, the protective paper on the back. That white sheet is just a protective to keep that film on the back. The front of this is really shiny, and you can see right through it, as you can see there. Um, but on the back side is your film that you're going to want to be pushing off, and you use uh, a tongue depressor. But this white paper is just to protect that your image. Uh, it's kind of like a reverse sticker if you have never used it before. But these tongue depressors are going to help you push that sticker uh, off onto your item. So when your um, transfer comes, and I'm going to run a little bit up the side. See how you have the full length of this uh, candlestick here? And then you've got you know, a long, a long transfer here. Now you can see pieces, you can see particular images on this transfer piece. You can see that there's like two sheets of script paper. You can see where it's definitely individual pieces. And that's how you could use it as well. You could cut out those pieces and use these little bits at the bottom. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna utilize my entire sheet together. And you can, you know, you can use it however you'd like. But uh, when you're doing it on the side of a drawer or on the front of a drawer, you know, you might want to use a bigger section. Here, I just want a bit of detail of this beautiful script to run up my candlestick and uh, complement that Selznick gray in one step. Uh, that contrast will be really pretty. Um, and so I say, always try to use, think about your transfer colors and then get a coordinating paint. So I'm just gonna go up uh, and I'm cutting the entire transfer itself uh, along with the protective uh, back paper, that white paper. And that is, you always kinda wanna leave it on the back because that transfer can uh, stick to something. And you don't want that to come off on anything else. So I'm, I liked these little postage uh, images, postage stamp, postage stamp images there at the bottom, and I wanted to get that on my candlestick as well. So I'm just going along. You don't have to be perfect at all. I'm just cutting in between some of the lines of the script here, and I'm gonna use um, this long strip. So once you get your piece cut, and that's exactly how I'm gonna lay it on here, and normally you're using a flat surface, but I, this obviously is very bumpy and it, you can still do it. It's, it won't be necessarily perfect, but it will lend to the rustic look. So take your white protective paper off the back and you're going to take your strip that you've cut here and lay that down where you want it to go. And you could use a little bit of painter's tape to kind of hold that in place if you don't feel comfortable holding it yourself. But I'm just gonna hold the sections here, and then you're going to start to use that tongue depressor to press that uh, film that's on, the, on that clear carrier sheet onto your um, painted surface. And again, I'm going over some rounded um, areas of this candlestick, but that's okay. You'll start to see how that transfer will will come off and it, it it's like I said a reverse sticker uh, stickers are usually um, have this this paper on the back and you peel the paper off or peel the sticker off the paper this is the reverse you're wanting to push um, the sticker off of a carrier paper that's on its front so as you use that tongue depressor and you're pressing that on to your painted candlestick or your painted painted surface, they will peel off. You see that? And it's it's just a, a little a bit at a time that you want to work your way up uh, this candlestick or whatever you're doing. If you were using this on a drawer, it's the same process. You would You would use some painter's tape to hold your transfer in place or to keep it straight on your item and then you're just it, you take your time and make sure you're pressing that film off of the clear carrier paper and uh, you don't have to go fast it's not meant to go quickly 
um, you're just wanting to go uh, along your project and make sure that you get it um, all to clearly come off. Now, because this is a more rustic uh, project, and I'm not, I'm not really concerned about it being a perfectly clear image. I'm going to like that some of those pieces are coming off. There are a lot of people that will distress their transfer a little bit. Once they get their transfer on their piece, they will um, take a light sandpaper to certain areas and kind of rub it away. So they'll kind of do that. And this is going to do this already because it is not a flat surface. You're gonna have areas of the transfer that maybe don't come off as clean and that's okay. Um, if you're using them on a more flat surface, you can get a completely clean um, release, but this is a bit uh, bumpy and you'll have some pieces that don't necessarily come off. But if you lift it up, you can see here that my image is coming off. And if there's anything that's not quite stuck down, you can just use your finger to press that down onto your painted surface and it will, it will adhere. And then I'm just gonna slowly work my way up this candlestick, which, you know, it takes a few minutes to do that. But I just want a touch of this to go all the way up. And I'll just speed it up here because it does take a little bit to get that transfer on there. Um, but this is how you use a transfer. It's very simple, uh, very user-friendly and easy. And um, I highly recommend giving them a try. This script transfer is absolutely beautiful. It has a beautiful cursive uh, handwriting from an old antique page and it's just gorgeous. So um, when you're all finished and you get your piece on, you can always take more pieces of that carrier paper and add it into different areas. And if there's any areas that didn't stick down, you just take your finger and press that onto your piece. And there you have your transfer. You have transferred that from the paper onto your decor piece and it's turned out beautifully. And as uh, I set these candlesticks up to use, uh, I didn't use them for candles. I did it on both uh, candlesticks, the large and the small, but I actually used some of my decorative uh, dress forms to sit on top. Another idea is you can use birdhouses. Birdhouses look beautiful on top of candlesticks as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this project today. If you have any questions, please ask them down in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them for you. But yes, think outside the box when it comes to candlesticks and see what you might be able to use them for other than just candles. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day.